Hi everyone. Today I am visiting the Laurel Snow Natural Area in order to study the cemeteries of this part of Tennessee. Last week I took you to an abandoned iron ore mine. Today I'm going to take you to an abandoned coal mine which served the communities of this area. So if you've watched my recent videos, you know how I'm becoming fascinated with how geology affects what we see in cemeteries. Not only the gravestones that we see in cemeteries, but also the personalities and the characteristics of the people buried in those cemeteries. This area is rich with coal, and the people who lived here, when the coal mines were open, they searched for seams of coal and they worked in the coal mines on a daily basis. As I'm hiking this trail I saw this deep rich section with coal in it and I just wanted to show it to you and this is what people spent their lives looking for and mining. This is how they made their living this made up some of their personality and their characteristics. I love it when I find something geological which helps me understand the cemeteries that served these local communities. Walking up along the trail, I did see sections that look like coal seams. And sure enough, I have found an old abandoned coal mine. The people of this community used to work in mines like this on a daily basis. I have seen cross ties from old railroad tracks. So probably narrow gauge tracks ran along what is now the trail and picked up coal from this mine and others like it on a daily basis. I want to take you inside now. This was a daily work environment. The people of these communities would come to these mines every day to mine coal, send it onto a narrow gauge railroad car, and the coal would go away, and then they would go home to their families. The cemeteries of this area served these communities in which the people who worked in these mines used to live. This area outside Dayton, Tennessee is steeped in human and natural history. I stopped into the Hiawassee Wildlife Refuge to watch and listen to winter flocks of sandhill cranes numbering in the thousands. At the Cherokee Removal Memorial Park, I learned about the Trail of Tears and the March of the Cherokee during their removal in 1838. When I was growing up, I first came to this area on a school trip. That was prior to the existence of the Highway 60 bridge, so we had to take Blythe Ferry across the Tennessee River. 
I've stopped into McInturf Cemetery. I'm always fascinated to find tree stumps and different kinds of trees as grave markers. Here's a good representation of a fallen log. I love the way the branch here pokes through the outer bark. And on this end, there are rings. A true Denver chronologist would be able to count the rings and tell me how old this tree was when it was cut down. I've stopped in quickly at the Barbie Sims Cemetery. There are only two grave sites here as far as I can tell, and the cemetery sits right behind a huge cell tower. I can hear the sandhill cranes still flying overhead, but I also hear a couple of hawks screaming in the distance. I'm visiting Garrison Cemetery in Ray County, Tennessee, and I'm standing at the grave site of Return Jonathan Meggs. I love that name. Even though we are in Ray County, Meggs County was named after Return. Return was a colonel in the U.S. Revolutionary War, and he came to this area of Tennessee to act as an agent and an advocate for the Cherokee as they were negotiating their treaties. His gravestone is very well preserved and it's for one reason that it's so well preserved. It's under this archway and you can see the lettering all the way from top to bottom. We have seen these arches before and I always find it fascinating to find such an aged gravestone in such good condition. I want to show you another gravestone which hasn't fared so well. I'm quite sure this is a limestone grave marker. There are no inscriptions on the marker itself. However, there is a gravestone in front of it which does have a name. Now I'm not sure these two correlate with each other. On the side is something very fascinating with this gravestone. I do believe this is a limestone grave marker. I can see the different strata of this rock and on one layer, the layer in the back of the gravestone, it has become delaminated from the rest of the rock. Now this delamination can occur for varying reasons. Most likely over the years, water has worked its way into the stone and during winter time, during freeze thaw cycles, as water freezes, it expands just a little bit. And over the years, it can fracture the rock. And I do believe that's what's happened here. Right next to that stone is another stone of particular interest. I am always fascinated with the different kinds of hand carving techniques old sculptures used to inscribe names onto gravestones. On this particular stone, the top word reads father. But if you look very closely at the first letter of the word father, the F, the F is boldened, or it's kind of like a fatty F. And you can see they did kind of like a three-dimensional F on the first letter, but then the rest of the letters are just singularly striped. I imagine they realized how much work it was going to be to do all the letters just like this. And they also probably realized they would run out of space if they tried to make all the letters fat like that one. This is a type of grave marker you don't see very often in this section of Tennessee. It's a handmade concrete marker made with a form. What's super interesting about this gravestone is the use of colored marbles to spell out the person's name. Now I have seen this quite a bit in the West, especially in New Mexico. But very rarely do I see the use of colored marbles to spell out a name in a concrete marker in this section of Tennessee. As I'm exploring Garrison Cemetery, 
a local gentleman and his wife were here visiting their son. They stopped to speak to me and they let me know that the limestone grave markers are in the oldest section of this cemetery. Those stones are very likely local because there is an outcropping of a very similar limestone not far from here. As I'm walking through, I can hear the sandhill cranes flying overhead. And I also hear a train in the distance. Not only do I enjoy the sights of a local cemetery and learning about the history, but I also enjoy the sounds that I know have been here for generations.